It's currently the sixth we're filming this, so it's a bit difficult to tell you what yes. happened. Let's give it a go. I mean, I, I could I could make some stuff up. <laughs> go on then. Why not? Um, the Tories betray us. Um, uh, the, uh, the the Democrats rig the system against Trump. Um, I, I don't know, you know some other stuff. Maybe 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 some white European children enjoy enrichment and then cease to exist. Well, tell us how that worked out. Yes. God, oh, that could be dark. Yes. Well, really, yeah, roll the dice. Well, Why not? Live dangerously. Wrong. There we are. Yes. Anyway. So we'll get to the news that I can tell you about, all the six days that we have of it, mm. which is that, well, it started out with the ending of the uh, Irish situation, or at least uh, the Irish Lives Matter movement propping up, which was pretty cool, because, of course, now the Irish government had tripled down in opposing the Irish existence. Uh, the Irish, it didn't take kindly. And so they started putting up posters that say Irish Lives Matter in uh, Northern Ireland and in Southern Ireland. Ireland, I'm told. This is just Northern Ireland here. And the British state obviously immediately investigated wait, wait, wait. them for hate. West and West Belfast heading on, on, on BBC News, anti-immigration signage, a hate incident. It literally says Irish lives matter. Hi folks, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just wanted to announce that we have a new line of merch in our merch store. The merch store was kind of empty for a while, and so I thought, right, okay, what do I actually want on shirts? And so I just went through some of the most epic and true things that I think that historical people have said. And John managed to make an amazing set of merch out of it. And we will have extra things coming in the store, such as posters for these to go on. Uh, thanks for everything, folks. Now back to the video. Yeah, so the British government were going to obviously crack down on the Irish, which at least there's a narrative there that would make somewhat sense, but obviously not when the government is, is run on the principle but of how, before us. How the hell can they cognitively do this in their own skulls? They spent... They spent two years going, Black Lives Matter is, if you don't agree with that, yeah. it's hateful. But if you say Irish Lives Matter, that's a hate incident. Oh, because the Irish are now declared white and therefore deserve, well, removal. That's their position, not mine. The British police. For anyone who's there. still a normie, stop being such a twat and just... <laughs> Have a good, good day. Just just recognize what's going on in the world, will you? But that was the British police. And then in Southern Ireland as well, um, some people put some signs up in Dublin. And of course, the, the discussion in Southern Ireland was also the Irish lives don't matter from the, the Irish nationalists. Funny world. And it's not the only thing to end off the Irish uh, news cycle, I suppose, which is that there was also the new Irish, <laughs> to which the, the Irish political elite decided to all get around and talk about how actually everything's great, man. Why? Because I've got my own slave class, man. They do everything for me, man. They, they'll drive me into town, bro. They'll make my food. They'll make my coffee and prep. They'll literally pick my vegetables. Yes. This is great. Not realizing that obviously the Irish elite are the elite and the rest of the yeah. Irish can suck I mean, a can, fat Can you one. imagine how bad it would be if you didn't have all of those immigrants? You might have Irish young people doing it and they, might, they might get a decent wage for doing so because you haven't got an endless supply of slaves. Or... This is the other big kicker. Those Irish people could buy a house. Yes. Which would be pretty good for them. Yes. But then you wouldn't have a slave class. That's pretty bad for you. Because then there'd be less demand on housing and they would be earning higher wages. But um, the dividend receiving class would have to have slightly lower profits. Yeah. I mean, we were dealing with some literal mental cases. I mean, like these responses were quite good <laughs> to some of the people who were just like, oh, it's so good. My, my slaves do everything for me. It was like, right here. Do you think they're aware of it? Well, they should have been after 2,000 comments on yes. one post. That guy, at least. But either way, um, what was pretty funny is, we, we don't, I can't include it yet, but I did see in the news cycle, just to end off the whole Irish saga, is the, the housing problem. I mean, we talk about the housing crisis in the UK, which is mental, yeah. but because of Ireland's mass speed run of our experiment, yeah. they actually ran out of houses. Like, I'm not joking. The government the other day announced that they physically cannot house the new people that turned up that day. There is no hotels to send them to. There is no army barracks to send them to. That is, no I don't, floating I don't think that's slow them down for long because before long it would be like, do you have a spare room? Well, no. Who then you taking an immigrant? It became the situation like two days ago, at the time of recording, that the Irish government said yeah. anyone who arrives via the refugee programs is going to be homeless. We are going to make you homeless. We have nowhere to put you. Do you know what they did to compensate for that? Oh God! What? They gave them loads of money, so they got a daily allowance of 119 euros for being homeless. 
But if you're homeless and you're Irish, well, you got zero, obviously. Fool. So they're literally importing homeless people now and then paying the homeless people to be homeless. I mean, this is, this is the level of speedrunnery. So they're trying. I don't, I don't want to say anything that will get us booted off YouTube. But if, if there were to be an enrichment incident at um, Davos... Literally paying. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that the people in charge in the West at the moment, I mean, they all need to go one way or another. Yeah, they need utter removal from the political process. Just no, yes. no power yeah, should be ever process. given to yes. these people ever that's, again. That's where they need, to, they, they need to go. They all need to be moved into inner city Birmingham. Anyway, but moving on from Ireland, because uh, I think that's probably enough. Yeah. But hopefully we don't have to come back to the Irish until they've won. But uh, when, the, in, Until they have a revolution. And... But either way, we'll pay attention. Cool, guys. Right. Yes. Thanks for, for what you're doing. You're, you're pretty awesome. Uh, we go on to Fat Liberation, which was good fun. I don't know if you saw this. It says country. We no, talking. I missed that one. West Virginia here, the fattest state in the US. I didn't realize how fat they were compared to the rest of the country. Is it, hang on, is that saying that California is healthy? Uh, by comparisons, this, ah. is, this is a graph of obesity in the US. But, it, of but it's course, all relative. Yes, dark green for the US is not a dark green for Serbia, for example. <laughs> Serbian women, the average Serbian woman is not the same fat ratio as the average American woman. It is just not. So, I mean, I, I know this because I did, I did a brokenomics on, on the dating market recently. I do know that 60% of the 18 to 35 women in the US are overweight or obese. I mean, we were looking at this lady here. She was the uh, poster child for the fat liberation movement. And um, I suppose we'll play the start here. This is the best bit. She tries to walk down a plane aisle and literally gets stuck. <laughs> and... <laughs> As you can see, she's complaining about this because the planes are not built for people. They're built for skinny, average weight people, unlike her. And that's discrimination. That was fun. That was fun taking she that. not wear more clothes as well? I mean, it looks like a... Honestly, it looks like an ox's backside. I don't know. I think an ox has more grace. It's kind of like a bunch of potatoes. Like, you know when you this bum crack. No, but you know when you you see someone who's that fat. I mean, the the ass or whatever else literally becomes like a potato sack. I mean, it's it's not yes. a, a mean thing to say about them. It's a way of accurately describing the situation. Well, that's the case. It's not even an insult. I'm not even saying trying to say, man, you look bad. I'm saying you actually resemble the potatoes in a sack. Yes. So there we are. But anyway, it was a good year for scammers, though. Ending off December. Uh, you know, congratulations. You finally, you finally did it, boys. You managed to literally not scam us over email. I did just find came this here and took it in person. annoying, to be honest. Yes. You think I didn't? I mean, I, I, I will continue to fund it through my taxes, of course. I mean, if there's anything that makes me want to go postal, it is this, to be honest. Where you just see... It, okay, government got scammed by shady contract, by shady businessman, mm. who told them... This project was worth this much, but it wasn't, and he stole a billion pounds and then left for Dubai. Yes. Yeah, bad news. Yes. Government gets scammed by man not even trying, <laughs> but said, I is brown, give money. <laughs> Can't really forgive it. And, and then, and Can't then, really forgive that level of incompetence. And, and then he was thrust a whole series of forms that, you know, you just sign here and we will give you money. Yeah. You think, I mean, this is the video. The guy sitting there dancing as he posts online his crime. And he's not been punished, obviously. Oh, yes, yeah, obviously. His crime was completely legalized by our state. So, yes. There's that. Yeah. But to end it off, <coughs> ah, God, I am dying. To end it off, before I die, I have something to tell you. What was that then? A miracle has happened. A Christmas miracle, Timmy. Oh, good. The government. Yes. They think they might have messed up. I, I, I think they might have, yes. Yeah, well, they, on, they on think what? so too. They think that maybe someone who applies for a skilled workers' visa should be skilled. Well, I mean, I mean it, it does stand to reason, yes. So they demanded that if you're going to get a skilled workers' visa, you should probably have above average earnings. So is, is this because figures came out while I was away that we were showing immigration of like 1.2 million? Yeah, basically. But the, the main problem here is like, they, they thought uh, this, this graph here, it's not even an upward curve, is it? it it's flat and then just... Burr, I mean, it yes. looks like an, a Venezuelan inflation graph. So, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm straining to, to make out the numbers at the bottom, but it does look like 
like you say, it was it was more or less flat. I mean, there's some there's some noise on it, but it's more or less more or less flat. Yes, I'm I'm doing the same face now. Um, and then in 1997, something happened. Um, and then after Bojo got in, he was like, "Hold my beer, Mister Blair. Look at this." Yeah, I, I did see someone on Twitter say that the Tories have now been in power for longer and imported more people than Blair. So really, they're the party of mass immigration. Really true, but also Blair did start it. I don't want anyone forgetting that. Like both of these people deserve Hague. Yeah, but I mean, they're, they're basically just all the same. I mean, yeah, that's, that's I why a... I say they deserve being in the Hague. And I don't yes. mean a trial. I just mean straight to jail. Like just put in that cell block. Yes, next well, to I mean, you're, you're you're much more forgiving than I am towards these people. But I don't know. I think they should share the rooms yeah. with Serbians, and Serbians will do the rest. Yeah, I love Serbia. Anyway, but yes. that was kind of you know unsustainable. So the government said, "Well, raise the the amount of money you've got to earn to be a skilled uh, worker in the UK to get that skilled workers visa." Uh, they then raised it to the same amount if you take inflation to account that they already had it at. So it did nothing. Yes, but they said they did something. So, and and, and to be fair, they, they won't actually do any of this anyway. They just talk. It's it's just like we, we, like uh, what well, was was the the Suella Braver thing, Braverman thing that you covered in the November video. This is what this is what the Tories do. Is every eighteen months they come up with a new method for how they're going to get down immigration. Yeah, and they talk about it for six months, right? And then they let uh, left wing lawyers pick at it, and then the news cycle changes to how it's how it's going to be held up for six months, and then they spend the final six months basically wrangling over. We would have loved to have done this thing, but we can't do it, and then the cycle repeats. I mean, it is more a realistic version of Dutch from Red Dead Redemption Two. He's like, fellas, I've got a plan. Yeah. And then the plan just doesn't work. And he's like, I've got a new plan. Yes. I'm like, great, great yeah. Dutch. What are we doing now, Dutch? But just to end this yeah. off, because um, it's the 6th of December. I don't actually know what happened in December, really, except all mm. six of those days. I, I thought I'd talk about an aspect of this that we didn't really get to go over, which is um, this, the India Young Professional Scheme Visa. Right. I'm not quite sure that's English, but whatever. It's, so if, if, if you're Indian and you're young and you're a professional, which presumably means, what, you've got a degree or something? Well, for some reason, since Indians became massively overrepresented in the executive branch of our government, um, <laughs> all of a sudden, uh, in 2021, uh, our government signed an agreement with India that, uh, that we want more Indians, as many as you have, if we could help it, but we'll cap it, as someone they, correctly pointed out. To be fair, they do have a lot of them. Yeah, well, they want to get rid of them, and um, the Indians in our country want them. So, yes. what can you do? I mean, not put it to a vote, obviously. Just pass it. Well, don't even pass it. It wasn't even, this isn't something that went to Parliament. Just oh. some, some guys met some Indian ministers, and then this was the law. Oh, this, 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 this is just departmental guidance. Off you go. No need to discuss it. No need to bait it. No need to even get the MPs to, to be dragooned into the voting aisles. No. We're just going to do it. So here's the overview. Uh, the India Young Professionals Scheme visa, mess of a phrase, allows Indian citizens between 18 and 30 to live and work in the UK for up to two years. And uh, to get in, there's a set of uh, eligibility requirements, of course, and they're very, very strict. Right. Uh, you have to be Indian. <laughs> Tick. Uh, 18 okay. to 30. Uh, that's not the hardest thing in the world. Um, you have to be 18. Well, you've already said that, so I don't really know what the point in that whatever yes. you have to have a bachelor's degree which is horrific I mean the process to get a bachelor's degree in India I, I have been told is like finding diamonds in a cow's anus it's impossible Actually, I've very, no it's really well, I, I, it's I like, it's like get, finding dung in a cow's anus so there's I mean, I managed plenty to get a of ways to get degree one by playing pool and going to the pub so yeah it's piss easy in the west I imagine yes. piss easy it is in India yes I mean it, it, well, I could actually believe it's it's it, it, it's it's more rigorous than here, but I mean that wouldn't say much. But I really don't. Yeah. I mean, I remember I watched uh, Winston talk about China, which is just another place where oh my god, but you need a visa, sorry, a degree. And he was talking about his medical students when they were taking their exams. They're allowed a textbook in the exam. That would help. Yeah, a little bit. Yes. So I don't know. I don't. I don't trust the rest of the world. I don't even trust our own world's uh, ability to determine who is actually skilled or not by got a degree. Yeah. I mean, we, we went over this previously, actually, with a lady in, the, in that segment there, where she was saying, well, I've got two master's degree and I still I can't make any money. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's almost like these things are bollocks. Anyway, yes. getting on. So a bachelor's degree, you're 18, you're Indian, 
and you have a whopping two thousand five hundred and thirty pounds in your account for two years. You can come here for two years. Right. Funnily, are you doing the math? Calculate. Yes. How many I'm... pennies a day they have to live on? Two five three zero divided by three six five times two. Uh, and we'll get the, yes. the amount per day that this Indian person has got to live off. Three pounds forty six. Not lower. Yeah, I thought it'd be even lower, but there we are. Yes. If you can live off three pounds thirty six, you're allowed to come to the UK. Great. Thankfully, this is limited to three thousand applicants per year. So that's the the upside. But right. of course, what? Why? Is is that per civil servant or? No, but my it's just. Why does this exist ever? Like it's such a symptomatic failure. And like we're we're just going to agree to three thousand more Indians every year uh, who can come here and work because they've got two and a half grand in their bank account. Who thinks like that? Who honestly goes into a department well, to do government legislation or, or public policy and comes up with that? And, and and more to the point, I mean this this will be an example. There's probably thousands of other schemes out there for. You know, if 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 you are we'll have a corrupt way to break into our country, yes. Yeah. If 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 I don't know, if 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 you're for oh, I don't know the and... Afghan resettlement scheme. Well, which yes. we it turns out we had about five times as many interpreters as we paid. The the Sri Lankan club foot and brown eyes scheme, or something. <laughs> there, there, there just there, there would just be like uh, there would just be like hundreds of these, won't there? Yeah, uh, it turns out we owed a debt to the entire Afghan females uh, football team, uh, so we flew them all out and their families and their coach. And then someone went to Kabul and interviewed the coach that we'd just flown out. Turns out he never left. And we gave him a list of all the girls that were flown out, and he said none of them were on the team. Yes. Yeah, m my point being, the, the absolute status. But don't worry, it's a, it's a fair and honest thing in which the people who negotiate this totally don't just want more Indians. No, no, no. They want a fair and honest dealing I mean, I mean the, to be fair, you, neighbor don't, country. you don't get to immigration of 1.2 million in a year without a lot of effort to do stuff like this. Of course, this is just a symptomatic thing yes. that I'm pointing out. But don't worry, it's completely fair, because of course, we agree to the same terms with the Indians. 3,000 of our boys can go out there if they've got a bachelor's degree and two and a half grand to their name. Now, funnily enough, that might take them a bit further than in the UK. Um, yes. The only thing is, I, I, don't, I don't think that's really fair, because nobody's going to India. I don't know if you noticed, I don't know if you've ever seen an immigration graph. There's the UK one. Yes. Of our sources and exports. Uh, none of us go there. I, I spent a couple of months out there once helping a, uh, a, a finance business out there doing a bit of business consultancy. And you end up fleeing. Well, I mean, it was an interesting experience to sort of see the place. I mean, you, you, you kind of understand. I, I do like traveling. I do like seeing other places. Oh, who doesn't? Yeah, so it was, it was valuable. But I mean, I was more than happy to move on after a while. But I'm just looking at where do English people move to? It's not India. Oh, I, I, mean, I, I wouldn't move there to live. I mean, I was there for a purpose. I'd like to see the numbers, if yeah. it exists somewhere, about how many of those places were actually taken up in... Because the 3,000 the UK, we know all 3,000 every year are going to be taken up. How many is the Indian side? I just, I'd love to see it. But anyway, there we are. I, I can't tell you what happened in December, mostly, because I'm not there. But we can look at something that happened at the start of it and the symptomatic consequences. Oh. There we are. I um, hope you're having a good time. I hope none of our predictions came true. But they're probably, probably best. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go over to lotuseaters.com to check out the merch, such as these posters with Courage is the Mother of All Virtues. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.